So, yeah. 90 seconds from now, we are looking at everything still hmm. being on track. So far, it doesn't look like they're going to be holding or anything. Right now, doing TVC checks, you can see there, uh, they, they just stopped. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they were doing some wiggle tests there on the center engines of the booster. Uh, 25 seconds from that uh, optional hold point. Obviously, we don't want that to be yep. uh, uh, an actual hold point, right? We just want them to fly through that get to the go for uh, launch from the flight director and hopefully, yep. um, you know, all of the deluge activation and everything that you just went through. And as soon as we see the deluge, Alex and I will completely be silent and let you enjoy the launch and hopefully enjoy everything that is going on. Uh, we are waiting for confirmation if they are going through that hold point and we are waiting for that. Once that is confirmed, we are just seconds away I think we see the... Did we already see the DSS? Looks like they're holding. Oh, they're holding. Okay. So that is okay. Looking at Don't temperatures panic. on the ship. There we go. Don't panic yet. They have they have plenty time to hold. Sometimes they just yep. troubleshoot a few minutes. And once they are confident, once everything looks good, they will, will progress. This is not... Uh, oh, oh, I, 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 I think saw I heard the vent, the vent on down, the side. Which means they're probably releasing the hold. There's the DSS, I think. That's it's hard Detonation to Detonation suppression system. Yeah, there we watch go. For okay, deluge. watch out. Yeah. And at this point, we will be quiet. See you on the other side. Forty seconds, a little over forty seconds into the flight, we are seeing thirty-three out of thirty-three Raptor engines ignited. Boosters pushing us downrange over the Gulf. Next milestone coming up in just under ten seconds is going to be Max Q, that Max Aerodynamic Pressure. Max Q. All right, so we're through max Q. That's the the heaviest stresses it's kind of seeing on the way up. Wow, that was pretty incredible. <laughs> I'm still recovering. <laughs> that was amazing. Beautiful views of the vehicle on ascent, pitching downrange away from the launch tower. And we are seeing Excellent. 33 healthy Raptor engines, if I might say that and the booster ascent looks to be good so far. And we are, I mean, Alex, so far, so far, so good, mm. right? We are, everything yeah. looking good. We are about 30 seconds away from hot staging. Yep, next up should be hot staging. That hot staging will be uh, 30 engines shut down and then uh, uh, ignition of the uh, ship engines and separation of the booster. There Watch out for the grid the, fins uh, to turn. Yeah, everything looking good here on the Raptor engines on the left. You watch for that very violent boost back flip. You will see that after the, that. That's expected. Um, but it looks quite interesting. That's the preparation for hot staging. That's hot staging. Yep. From our and cameras. I think there's the boost back. Look at that flip. Wonderful. That's oh, that the boost flip back turn started. 
That was an interesting flip, but I think that looks good on the boost back. Yeah, that looks good, right? Looks like two engines might be out on the boost up, okay. on the boost back burn. We will uh, await confirmation what that means for the catch. Of course, SpaceX will say something that, again, the flight director needs to confirm a go for catch. That is the requirement. We also see six healthy engines on ship 34 right now, which is, of course, Still their main like objective. Still looking like their go for, for return, but obviously they are checking all of the parameters. And remember the last time we had an engine out as well. And that was not something that stopped them from going for a catch. So that doesn't mean anything yet. Still go for catch, apparently. And we are still looking at a booster returning, awaiting final confirmation from SpaceX for go for catch. That usually happens after the shutdown of the boost back berm is where they confirm. Also, look at the ship. Look at continuously if all engines uh, are You can ongoing. see... Look right over where the center engines are. You can see the, the, the purple hue there. Oh, yeah. And we are awaiting final catch go. Still so good. Far, so far, so yeah. good. Everything good. Everything good. We like to see what we... Like, everything looks to be okay right now. Of course, the final okay There's will be done by There's a hot staging ring separating. Look at that. Oh, it's floating away. And we are now usually at the frame where they commit for a catch. We have not heard anything of the contrary yet. And the catch would be in two minutes from now. And let's see. The boost back burn might be a bit late because two engines were out. So might, maybe had they have yeah. corrected a bit. So maybe the timeline is a bit off, but... Uh, Some of the times might be off precisely because of that. Those two engines out, of course, will uh, affect that timeline. But I have not heard any call-outs that they are not going or anything. Still yeah, going for it. I mean, forward. honestly, that booster is starting to aim now. So yeah. looking like they might do go for it. I want to jinx it as a commentator here. That's but a that funny looking look hot staging ring. But that booster looks to me like it's on track for the tower, Alex. Yeah. Let's see that re-entry. Watch out for the engine glow. Because that aft end gets very hot during the re-entry. Does not do any entry burn. Look so at that tracking. Amazing. Oh, there's the glow there coming. There it comes. There are go for booster catch. Still all going. They are... Still, look at that glow, Alex. <laughs> Fantastic views. That's so cool. Watch for the uh, engines to ignite, and then they will shut down all but three for the final approach to the tower. Let's see what happens. They had and two engines out on, on the boost back burn, so let's see let them burn. Give us that beautiful flame uh, flamethrower. I'm sorry. There it is. There are the engines. Landing burn ignition. Whoa! And catch. Okay. Welcome. Wow. Welcome back, Booster. We have a catch. Thir three <laughs> Another times. Catch. Wow. There we go. And Very toasty. And look at that. Look at that toasty Booster, but also look in the bottom right. You know what's still running just fine? The ship. It's still going. The ship course. is still going. Let's let's see, because it still has a, a, a about a, another minute or so on its burn. It looked like maybe one engine on that landing burn did not work, but the rest were running. The absolute 
absolute craziness of SpaceX to have multiple engines back, not on the boost back burn, and also some unsureness, and they are still committing for this, Alex. Whoo! Mm -hmm. That's... That was interesting. Wow. I am... I am honestly impressed. Oh. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. That's... That's not... That's a ship rotating, Alex. That's not nominal. That doesn't look nominal, yeah. That is definitely a ship out of control. And this is why they don't put, uh, put it into orbit. That... So we're still Looks getting video down from rather the ship. interesting. We've lost several engines and we've lost attitude control. It's of tumbling. The it's look one thing I mean, that I did hear this... earlier, uh, Adrian. If, if, if you allow me, uh, yeah, we'll they called out on the Nimitz. Oh, sorry. Similar to the last Starship launch, not long after, videos began being posted of the upper stage re-entering Earth's atmosphere in pieces. The different videos over the Bahamas show the aftermath. In regard to the debris of the upper stage, especially with a similar result on the last flight, SpaceX made it clear they were prepared in case this happened. The commentators were quoted saying, Unfortunately, this happened last time too, so we've got some practice at this now. We have a lot of measures put before we ever launch a rocket to make sure that we're keeping the public safe. Those worked last time, and they're actively in work right now, he said. It's important to point out that the two Starships, which experienced major issues between this flight and Flight 7, have both been Starship V2. A lot of changes were made to upgrade the vehicle, but obviously there's still work left. For example, redesigns to the propulsion system, including a 25% increase in propellant volume over previous generations were made, meant to add additional vehicle performance and the ability to fly longer duration missions. The vehicle's avionics also underwent a complete redesign, with the goal of adding additional capability and redundancy for increasingly complex missions like propellant transfer and ship return to the launch site. Soon after the mission, SpaceX tweeted saying, During Starship's ascent burn, the vehicle experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly and contact was lost. Our team immediately began coordination with safety officials to implement pre-planned contingency responses. We will review the data from today's flight test to better understand root cause. As always, success comes from what we learn, and today's flight will offer additional lessons to improve Starship's reliability. In response to Flight 7 and the debris in particular, SpaceX released a statement saying, Immediately following the anomaly, the pre-coordinated response plan developed by SpaceX, the FAA, and ATO, or Air Traffic Control, went into effect. All the debris came down within the pre-planned debris response area, and there were no hazardous materials present in the debris and no significant impacts expected to occur to marine species or water quality. SpaceX reached out immediately to the government of Turks and Caicos and worked with them in the United Kingdom to coordinate recovery and cleanup efforts. While an early end to the flight test is never a desired outcome, the measures put in place ahead of launch demonstrated their ability to keep the public safe. They went on to say, SpaceX led the investigation efforts with oversight from the FAA and participation from NASA, the National Transportation Safety Board, and the U.S. Space Force. After the last flight, SpaceX was working with the FAA to either close the mishap investigation or receive a flight safety determination. Obviously, the result of today's flight isn't ideal, but something they knew was possible. 